Sejam todos bem-vindos ao Ancap News. Can I ask you to capsulize your philosophy? What uh, is Randism? Uh, first of all, I do not call it Randism, and I don't like that name. All I right. call it objectivism. All right. Meaning a philosophy based on objective reality. Now let me explain it as briefly as I can. First, my philosophy is based on the concept that reality exists as an objective absolute. That man's mind, reason, is his means of perceiving it. And that man needs a rational morality. I am primarily the creator of a new code of morality which has so far been believed impossible, namely, a morality not based on faith. On or faith. Not on faith, not on arbitrary whim, not on emotion, not on arbitrary edict, mystical or social, but on reason, a morality which can be proved by means of logic, which can be demonstrated to be true and necessary. All right, all right. Now, may I define what my morality is? All right. Because this is merely an introduction. My morality is based on man's life as a standard of value. And since man's mind is his basic means of survival, I hold that if man wants to live on earth and to live as a human being, he has to hold reason as an absolute, by which I mean that he has to hold reason as his only guide to action and that he must live by the independent judgment of his own mind, that his highest moral purpose is the achievement of his own happiness, and that he must not force other people nor accept their right to force him, that each man must live as an end in himself and follow his own rational self-interest. And now what is self-sacrifice? Yes, what is self-sacrifice? You say that you do not like the altruism by which we live. You, you like a certain kind of Ayn Randist selfishness. I uh, would say that I don't like is too weak a word. I consider it evil. And uh, self-sacrifice is the precept that man needs to serve others in order to justify his existence, that his moral duty is to serve others. That is what most people believe today. Well, yes, we're taught to feel concerned for our fellow man, to feel responsible for his welfare, to feel that we are, as religious people uh, might put it, children under God and responsible one for the other. Now, why do you rebel? What's wrong with this philosophy? But that is what, uh, in fact, makes man a sacrificial animal. That man must work for others, concern himself with others, or be responsible for them. That is the role of a sacrificial object. I say that man is entitled to his own happiness and that he must achieve it himself, but that he cannot demand that others give up their lives to make him happy. I and am. nor should he wish to sacrifice himself for the happiness of others. I hold that man should have self-esteem. Okay, but what's, so what's bad about the person who wants to help other people? Well, to begin with, that's the big mistake. People can want to help other people properly and with very good reasons, but that isn't altruism. Altruism doesn't mean merely helping people. It means sacrificing yourself to others, placing the interests of others above your own. It's the self-sacrificing person who is an altruist. And what's wrong with that? What's wrong with committing suicide? What's wrong with giving up life? And why is the happiness of another person important and good, but not your own? To sacrifice for your loved one is, in many cases, then, a, a misnomer. If you love your husband or wife, and you have to, let us say, select between spending money for your spouse if he's ill, or uh, going to a nightclub. It's not a sacrifice to spend money for your spouse if he or she is your value. That is what you want to do. I see. But if you let, for instance, your husband die in order to save the neighbor's husband or your wife, that would be altruism. You can make others happy when and if 
those others mean something to you selfishly. If you love them, then you want to make them happy. Fine. If you don't love them, that's not a moral crime. You don't have to love everybody. You cannot love everybody because it's a meaningless expression. You can love only those whom you value. And if they contribute to your happiness, you contribute to theirs. That's fine. But each one of you has to be selfish about it. Uh, I don't understand why you have to be so harsh in your, def in your evaluation of those people. Why, why call it immoral? Why don't you just say... Why, why don't you say it's a waste of time? Why, why pass judgment on me? Because look at the state of the world today. Yeah. And you cannot be harsh enough on those who created it. And those who created it are the philosophers of altruism. It's those who preach self-sacrifice, selflessness, self-abnegation, all the anti-self theories, which means anti-man. All those who demand man's sacrifice, they have succeeded, and yeah. look at the results in the world. That's a, that's a theory or a way of life or an, a philosophic idea which is, which is advanced by religions, that we should sacrifice for others. That's right. All right I want to make sure I understand you, Ms. Rand. Why is it so... I'm still not quite sure why you're so harsh on those who would sacrifice for other people. Because they, are, they don't hesitate to sacrifice whole nations. Uh, look at Russia. Communism is based on altruism. Look at Nazi Germany. The Nazis were more explicit than even the Russians in preaching self-sacrifice and altruism. And self-sacrifice for the state, for the folk, the people. Every dictatorship is based on altruism. Now you can't fight it by merely saying it's a difference of opinion. It's a difference of life and death. If a life can have a theme song, and I believe every worthwhile one has, mine is a religion, an obsession or a mania, or all of these, expressed in one word. Individualism. <laughs>